Okay, assalamu alaikum and uh, good day to everyone. I really welcome all of you and other students they are watching this lecture on the YouTube. Let's say in my reset batch of SBR June 2024. So before discussing what exactly we offer in SBR, let us start with IFRS 5. We'll be discussing this and then inshallah, I will also exactly let you know what you will be getting in SBR from my college. Just a minute, this message from the student. Okay, IFRS 5. Basically, IFRS 5 is having two parts. The name of IFRS 5 is Non-Current Asset Held for Sale and Discontinued Operations. So, inshallah, we'll be discussing the discontinued operation in the next class. And we have already uh, revised number of IASs like we have re uh, we, I have already taken the revision live revision class on IAS, IAS 16 IAS 36 37 IAS 10 these are the IASs which we have already uh, covered in our live revision classes now let's discuss uh, this IFRS in our reset uh, Today is the just orientation of the reset batch for SBR June 2024. Non-current asset held for sale. IFRS 5. Basically, what exactly IFRS 5 is going to uh, give us when it comes to accounting. Let's say, If I talk about IFRS 5, let's non-current asset held for sale and discontinued operation. As I discussed that, we'll be discussing discontinued operation, I think, in a uh, very next class after this. The first thing which you sh everybody should know regarding IFRS 5, that is, let's say if you are having a property plan and equipment, and instead of Using this property plan and equipment, let's say your organization has decided to get the economic benefit by selling this property plan and equipment. Then obviously you will be think. Then we'll think for IFRS five. That is it applicable or not? Repeat. Let's say you have a property plan and equipment. You are having any intangible asset, and instead of using these assets, your company is deciding instead of using these assets, let us sell and get the economic benefit. If this is the case that you want to get economic benefit by selling these assets rather than by using, then obviously we'll go towards IFRS 5 and then we have to see either IFRS 5 is applicable or not. Because just intention is not the criteria. So before discuss uh, discussing what is the criteria of IFRS 5, because until unless IFRS 5 criteria is not met. Obviously, you cannot apply accounting of IFRS 5. Before discussion of the criteria, that what is the criteria of IFRS 5, let me first tell you. On any financial statements, if IFRS 5 has been implemented, so what are the major changes you will see after applying IFRS 5? And then we'll be discussing the criteria as well. So basically, after the implementation of IFRS 5, After the implementation of IFRS 5, major changes in your financial statements. Major changes. Number one, non-current asset will be reclassified to current asset. It's a really, really big change. You will reclassify the non-current asset as current asset okay then obviously no depreciation previously entity was depreciating this asset but after implementation of ifrs 5 no depreciation 
third asset is measured at lower of carrying amount and the second is lower of A and B. A is the carrying amount and B is the fair value minus cost to sell. Fair value Now look at this. If your organization has implemented IFRS 5, three major changes you will see in your financial statements. Number one, non-current asset will be reclassified to current asset and obviously no depreciation after applying IFRS 5 and asset is measured at lower of the carrying amount and the second is fair value minus cost to sell. Now look at the changes. They are very major changes. They are not normal changes, they are very significant changes. That is why IFRS 5 has given the criteria. If the criteria is met, only then IFRS 5 is applicable. Otherwise, IFRS 5 is not applicable at all. Repeat. IFRS 5 has given, the question is why IFRS 5 has given us a criteria, whatever it is. The logic is very simple. Look at the changes which you will see in your financial statements after. Okay, slowly and gradually students are coming. Alhamdulillah. So after applying IFRS 5, you will see the major changes in your financial statement. Look at the changes. Number one change. Look, non-current asset will be reclassified as current asset. The second is no depreciation. And third, you are, you are going to measure the asset lower of the carrying amount and fair value less cost to sell. Since after applying IFRS 5 in the financial statement, there are going to be really big major changes. That is why IFRS 5 has given us a criteria. If that criteria is met, only then IFRS 5 is applicable. Otherwise, it is not applicable. Okay. Now let us see what is the criteria before applying IFRS 5, which has to be met. I have given you the reason why do we have whatever the criteria is. Look at the definition. IFRS 5 non asset held for sale and discontinued operations. I have any, I just mentioned that in today's class we will be discussing inshallah non asset held for sale. And the class which is followed by this, we are going to discuss discontinued operations, inshallah. IFRS 5 non-current asset held for sale and discontinued operations says that non-current assets or disposal group. Actually, disposal group means you can say a group of assets which is saleable in a single transaction. So this disposal group will, will also be discussing a little bit over here and in a really big detail in the next class, inshallah. But a simple idea of the disposal group is uh, that is a group of assets you are selling in a single transaction or you can say like that you are sell disposal group means simply a cash generating unit which you are selling in a single transaction. Disposal group should be classified as held for sale if it's carrying amount will be recovered principally primarily, primarily through a sale transaction rather than the continuing use that is very important. Carrying amount will be recovered primarily through primarily through a sale transaction rather than continuing use. A disposal group, a group of asset, there's a possibility of liabilities as well, obviously, that the entity intends to dispose of in a single transaction. For example, if you're selling a, let's say, a cash generating unit, normally what happens? What is, what do you mean by what do you mean by a single transaction? See, let's say if you are selling a separate line of business, normally what happens? One of your competitors, competitors is going to buy the entire separate line of business from you. That is a meaning of disposal group. So dispose basically, that is a meaning of a single transaction. 
A disposal group is a group of asset and possibly liability that entity intends to dispose of in a single transaction. So I hope this single transaction concept should be clear to you that you are your entity is selling a separate line of business and one of your competitors is going to buy the entire business, obviously. That is the meaning of a single transaction. Classification is held for sale. Now, this is extremely important, which we are going to discuss right now. Extremely important. So you have to be really good when it comes to an IFRS 5, the criteria. So before applying IFRS 5, either on a single asset, which falls in the scope of IFRS 5, or a disposal group, you have to know the criteria. IFRS 5 requires the following conditions to be met before an asset or a disposal group can be classified as held for sale. So all the conditions must be met. Not one of them, all of them. Number one, the item is available for immediate sale in its present condition. The item is available for immediate sale in its present condition. Now, please try to understand. For example, your entity wants to sell a machine. Oh, okay. Let's say your company has given the advertisement that in which amount is quoted and specification regarding machine, everything is mentioned. And assuming your company has received offers as well, okay? Let's say one of the buyers, one of the buyer is really want to buy the machine, assuming the buyer company has visited your organization. They are interested to buy the machine and obviously you people are interested to sell it. But before accepting the consideration from the buyer, your company says that right now we cannot sell this machine because right now one of our customers order, we are working on one of our customers order by using this machine. And let's say it will take six months to complete that order. After that, we'll be selling this machine to you. The moment you mention that this machine is right now working for XYZ customer and it will take six months to complete that customer order. And after that, we will sell this machine. It means that right now, Right now, the item is not saleable in its present condition. Since the item, the machine is not saleable in its present condition, so IFRS 5 cannot be applied right now. But you can do one thing. The example which I have given, in that example, you cannot, right now you cannot apply IFRS 5. But if your company really wants to apply IFRS 5, then you can do one thing. Then you should ask the buyer that instead of just buying the machine, you ask the buyer, take the machine, also take the customer order. And you complete that customer order and deliver whatever number of units which your company is required to deliver, buyer is going to de deliver. If there are such customary practices in the market, if it is legally, let's say, permissible, and another thing is buyer is agreed for that, then this machine will become saleable in its present condition. Because right now you're not selling only the machine, you're giving the machine with the customer order. But I have put number of if there. If there's a such customary practice exists, you have to see, look for that. You also see one more thing. Is it, you know, legally possible to do that? Plus you have to see this, uh, buyers or buyer has to be, buyer should be agreed, agreed for that also. If 
all these ifs, if, which I have mentioned, if every condition is fulfilled, then obviously we will say your asset is saleable in its present condition. The second is sale is highly probable. Actually, highly probable means after applying IFRS 5, your assets should be sold within 12 months. What is the meaning of highly is probable over here? See, in different IESs and IFRSs, definitely you uh, should have seen one word that is only they use the word probable. But here they're saying highly probable. Highly probable means after applying IFRS 5, assets should be sold within 12 months. Okay. Third, management is committed to plan to sell the item. See, management should be committed to have a plan to sell this item, to sell this asset. Obviously, commitment can be seen by the actions of the management. Obviously, only words are not enough. Like there are a number of students, they, they are committed but just by their words, when it comes to the action, so sorry to say there's no action. If you just keep saying, obviously only the lip services not, will not make you a successful person. Your actions should speak louder than your words. So management commitment can be seen with their actions. An active program to locate a buyer has been initiated. Means you should have initiated, you, you are supposed to initiate the active program to locate the buyer. For example, if uh, advertisement is required to sell that asset, so you should have given the advertisement. On it, it has, you're not just required to give the advertisement, an advertisement in a, a, by using the proper social media. You, you need to know if I'm selling the, let's say, machine, so where should I give the ad? Okay, the item is being actively marketed at a reasonable price in relation to the current fair value. That is extremely important, reasonable price. In relation to the current fair value, that is very important. Let me explain. See, you have to know what is the current fair value of your asset. What do you mean by this? Basically, you should be asking, you should be quoting. You should quote the price by considering the current fair value of your asset. For example, the current fair value of your asset is 10 million. Okay. But you are asking 15 million. So obviously, you are not asking a reasonable price. Another example. See, reasonable price is going to vary according to the economic conditions. See, when there is a boom in the economy, everything is fine. Organizations are performing very well. Then obviously in that time, the price will be really high and you will be able to sell it. But if there is a recession in the economy, businesses are not performing well, prices of the non current asset are low, they are not very high. In that period of time, if you're asking a really high price, if you're asking more than the fair value, so obviously that will not be considered as a reasonable price. So reasonable price means you have to consider the current fair value of your asset. The sale is expected to be completed within one year from the date of classification. That is, the, they have given you the meaning of highly probable. It is unlikely that the plan will change significantly or be withdrawn. So that is very important. Once organization has decided all the criteria is met, they are committed each and everything, then it is IFRS 5 says it is unlikely that plan will be changed significantly or be withdrawn. Obviously, organizations, uh, when, they, when they make a decision, they are serious about that. So one thing is student, you have to be really good in this criteria. Number one, your understanding has to be really good. Plus, I would request try to memorize this criteria as well. It will really help you to answer if anything comes regarding this criteria.
ओके एसेट्स दैट आर टू बी एबेंड और वाउंड डाउन ग्रेजुअली कैन नॉट बी क्लासिफाइड एज हेल्ड फॉर सेल बिकॉज दे कैरी अमाउंट विल नॉट बी रिकवर्ड प्रिंसिपली थ्रू ए सेल ट्रांजेक्शन वट यू मीन बाय दिस फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट मी गिव यू एन एग्जाम्पल लेट से वट यू मीन बाय एसेट दैट आर टू बी एबेंड सिंपली यू नीड टू नो इफ एसेट दैट आर टू बी एबेंड और वाउंड डाउन ग्रेजुअली can not be classified as held for sale the reason which i first five is giving i first five says because the carrying amount will not be recovered principally through a sale transaction means you still have a intention to use the asset and get the economic benefit just let me give you the example for example we have a property plan and equipment and this property plan and equipment this machinery produces product y repeat Let's say we are having a property plan and equipment which produces product Y. Okay, and now your organization's management they have realized the demand of product Y is very low. Okay, and your company has decided to shut down the production of product Y right now. to stop the functioning of this property plan and equipment which produces which manufactures product y after they have shut down the production of product y let's say they have stopped using property plan and equipment which manufactures product y company says you we have to keep this property plan and equipment in a workable condition and let's say after one year maybe after two years maybe after six months if the demand of product y again comes in the market so we will start utilizing this property plan and equipment we will start manufacturing prop product y again now look at this step 1 company has shut down the production of product y but they kept property plan and equipment in a workable condition and then now they are saying if the demand of product y comes again in the market we will start manu we will immediately then start manufacturing product y it means in my entire example i cannot see any intention of selling property plan and equipment in fact entity still is having the intention to utilize the asset and to get the economic benefit that is why fs5 in that scenario is not applicable because entity does not have the intention to sell the asset even though you are not using the asset it is abandoned but still you cannot apply fs5 because there is no intention to sell the asset look at this hi so can the property be classified as held for sale high soap is preparing its financial statement for the year ended december x7 on 1st december x7 the entity became committed to a plan to sell a surplus office property and has already found a potential buyer great on 15 december 2007 a survey was carried out and it was discovered the building had dry rot and substantial remedial work would be necessary may something is seriously wrong with your uh, let's say building building had dry rot let's say the xyz wood is becoming like a powder in a there are cracks in that wood it has become in a powdery situation so substantial work would be necessary the buyer is prepared to wait for the work to be carried out but the property will not be sold until the problem has been rectified this is not expected to occur until summer 2000 x8 very important point you have even found a buyer 
buyer is willing to wait as well. But there is a problem. IFRS 5 says, the item is available for immediate sale in its present condition. Can I say right now, it is categorically mentioned in the question that property cannot be sold until unless this work has been completed. This particular problem has been rectified. So simply you will say that according to IFRS 5, non-current asset, let's say held for sale and discontinued operation, that item of property plan and equipment should be available for immediate sale in its present condition. After that, you just need to write a single line that since uh, this property will not be sold until the problem has been rectified. So simply that is why. Right now, IFRS 5 is not applicable because this property is not saleable in its present condition. Can the subsidy be classified as held for sale? Let's see. A subsidy entity B is for sale at a price $3 million. So they are asking $3 million for a subsidy. There has been some interest from the prospective buyer, but no sale as of yet. One buyer has made an offer of $2 million. Look at this. You are asking $3 million. You got one offer for $2 million. There's a really big difference what you are asking and what offer you are getting. But the directors of HISOP rejected the offer. Okay. The directors have just received advice from their accountant that fair value of the business is $2.5 million. Okay. They have decided not to reduce the sale price of B at the moment. Now listen and listen carefully. There is a condition in IFRS 5 which says that you should be asking, you should be quoting a reasonable price according to the current fair value. You have asked $3 million and you have received only one offer that is for $2 million. Obviously, there's, there's a really big difference what company is asking and what offer that you are receiving. Plus, directors have received the advice from the accountants that the fair value of this subsidy, this business is 2.5 million. And it's still after receiving the advice from the accountant, come your directors are not willing to reduce the sale price. It means that $3 million is not a reasonable price. If you're not quoting a reasonable price, so simply IFRS 5 cannot be applied. Look at this. A part, we said, IFRS 5 states that in order to be classified as held for sale, the property should be, should be available for immediate sale in its present condition. The property will not be sold until the work has been carried out. Demonstrating that the facility is not available for immediate sale. Therefore, the property cannot be classified as held for sale. I think we decided the same thing. The subsidy B does not meet the criteria for classification as held for sale, although Actions to locate a buyer are in place. The subsidy is not for sale at price that is reasonable compared with its fair value. The fair value of the subsidy is 2.5 and you advertise it how advertise was 3 million. It cannot be classified as held for sale until the sale price is reduced. Okay. After applying IFRS 5, I think I've already discussed after applying IFRS 5, how do we carry the asset? We, you will carry the asset, asset will be measured at lower of carrying amount and fair will less cost to sell. Now listen, 
let's say all the criteria is met and now you are going towards applying i for s5 so what is the exactly accounting listen before applying before applying ifrs 5 calculate up dated carrying amount of the asset Before applying IFRS 5, calculate the updated carrying amount of the asset. Now the question is, what do you mean by updated carrying amount of the asset? You're not supposed, as soon as the criteria is met, it does not mean you start applying IFRS 5. Actually, before applying IFRS 5, you have to calculate updated carrying amount of the asset. What do you mean by this? Let's say we are having a property plan and equipment. on which we want to apply IFRS 5. Now, regarding property plan and equipment, there are two possibilities. One, that you are use, your company is using cost model of IA16, or there's a possibility that your company is using revaluation model. Let's say there's a property plan and equipment on which we want to apply IFRS 5, but this, assuming, I'm just assuming, company is using the cost model. So actually, what do you have to do? What do you mean updated carrying amount? Updated carrying amount means first, before applying IFRS 5, if your asset needs to be depreciated, then you need to first depreciate the asset. Because there is a possibility Let's say examiner says the property plan and equipment on 1 1 2024 is having a carrying amount of 1000. I'm just giving you a little idea. Remaining life five years. And your examiner says IFRS 5 criteria is met on 30th September 2024. If IFRS 5 criteria is met on 30th September 2024, so what do you have to do? If you are using IS 16 cost model, so first you will take the property plan equipment, carrying amount on 1 1 2024 is 1000. Can I say from this 1000, you have to deduct the depreciation of nine months? So basically, just a minute, let's see what is the amount. This is 150, that is 850. So simply, before applying IFRS 5, you have to first calculate the updated carrying amount. Updated carrying amount means if depreciation is required, so you have to depreciate the asset. There's another possibility. That instead of cost model, there is a possibility your company is, let's say, following the revaluation model. So it means before applying IFRS 5, if depreciation is required, you should depreciate, you have to depreciate the asset. After that, you need to check for the revaluation. If there's a revaluation, you have to record the revaluation. And by applying these two steps, you will get an updated carrying amount. And once you have calculated the updated carrying amount, that updated carrying amount will be compared with fair value is cost to sell and whichever is lower. So sim let me repeat again. Before applying IFRS 5, you have to calculate the updated carrying amount. And logically, updated carrying amount will be compared with fair value minus cost to sell. And you will keep the asset at lower of updated carrying amount and farewell as cost to sell. We will be applying all these things. Don't worry at all. Look at this. Measurement of asset and disposal group held for sale. 
items classified as held for sale should in accordance with IFRS 5 be measured at lower of their carrying amount and fairless cost to sell. Where fairless cost to sell is lower than the carrying amount. Let's say I'm assuming the updated carrying amount is 850 and fair value minus cost to sell is let's say 800. So you have to bring your asset from 850 to 800. So you have to rec recognize the impairment loss of 50. This 50 will be a simply impairment loss. And this impairment loss will be charged to profit and loss. SOCS, statement of comprehensive income. So if updated carrying amount is 850, fair less fair value minus cost to sell is 800, then there's an impairment loss of 50, which will be charged to p &L. Where fair value is cost to sell is lower than the carrying amount, the item is written down and written down is treated as an impairment loss. First point. If a non grant asset is measured using a revaluation model, and it meets the criteria to be classified as held for sale. It should be revalued to fair value immediately before it classified as held for sale. Stop. Let's now assume that we have calculated the updated carrying amount of property plan and equipment, which is 850, but Examiner says the fair value is, let's say, 1000 and cost to sell, it is, let's say, 100. Now, listen. And these two values, they are given on 30th September, the date on which criteria is met. In my Example B, entities following IA 16 revaluation model. Okay, never forget this. Let's say we were required to depreciate the asset. We have depreciated the asset. The carrying amount is 850. Since the company follows IA 16 revaluation model, so before applying IFRS 5, what do you have to do? You have to compare this 850 just with the fair value. Repeat, you have to compare 850 with the fair value and we can see there's a revaluation surplus of 150. Now listen, this revaluation surplus of 150 will be recognized according to IA 16, which means that I'm going to debit the property plan and equipment by 150. Revaluation surplus, which is recognized in OCI as 150. After this 150 revaluation surplus, now logically updated carrying amount will not be 850. Now logically updated carrying amount is 1000. See, we depreciated the asset. We calculated carrying amount 850. Since we are following IA 16 revaluation model, then IFRS 5 says before applying IFRS 5, compare this 850 with the fair value. So we can see there's a revaluation surplus of 150. Okay. Now, logically, property plan and equipment carrying amount is not 850, now it is 1000. Okay. Now we have update, we have calculated the updated carrying amount, which is 1000. Now, what do you have to do? According to IFRS 5, you have to compare. Updated carrying amount with fair value minus cost to sell and you will keep the asset at lower of carrying amount and fair value, fair value minus cost to sell. In this example, can I say fair value minus cost to sell is 900. So even though the updated carrying amount is 1000, but you cannot keep the asset at 1000, you have to keep the asset at 900. And this 100 is a, because... Uh, 
that hundred is just cost to sell. We know that. Look at this. Fair value minus cost to sell is nine hundred. So you cannot keep the asset at one thousand. You have to bring that asset from one thousand to nine hundred. Logically, this difference is just because of cost to sell, but this difference will be as will be taken as impairment loss and will be charged to PL. We'll take it like an impairment loss, even though it is just because of the cost to sell, and charge to profit and loss. Very important point. When you'll be recognizing this hundred impairment loss, it will not disturb revaluation surplus. Under IFRS 5, when you recognize when you recognize the impairment loss, that impairment loss under IFRS 5 is directly charged to profit and loss. Even though you can say that, sir, there's a revaluation surplus in the carrying amount of property plan equipment. Yes, it is there. But IFRS 5 says whatever impairment loss you are recognizing under IFRS 5, it is charged to PL only. And if in the future, there's going to be any reversal under IFRS 5. If the reversal of impairment loss occurs under IFRS 5, reversal will only be recognized as income in the PNL. So impairment loss charged to PNL, and if there's a reversal in the future, recognize in the PNL. If a non current asset is measured using a revaluation model and it meets the criteria to be classified as being held for sale, it should be revalued, which we did, to fair value immediately before it is classified as held for sale. It is then revalued again at the lower of carrying amount and fair value less cost to sell. The difference is selling cost. Should be charged against what? Profit and loss in that period. When a disposal group is being written down to fair value to sell, the impairment loss reduces the carrying amount of asset, the order which is prescribed by IAS 36. If I just give you the idea, basically under IAS 36, when we are required to allocate impairment loss to a cash generating unit, then IAS 36 says, if there is any specifically mentioned asset, First, you should you have to allocate impairment loss to the specifically mentioned asset. The specifically mentioned asset means, uh, let's say the asset has been destroyed. Obviously, we know that in a cash generating unit, there are a number of assets. If one of them is destroyed, so when you will be allocating impairment loss, the first you have to allocate the impairment loss to a specifically mentioned asset means the asset which has been destroyed. Second, you will allocate the impairment loss to the goodwill and we are talking about obviously purchase goodwill. Third under IS 36, when we allocate the impairment loss, then we allocate the impairment loss to all other assets which fall in the scope of IS 36. So how do we allocate impairment loss under IS 36 to a cash generating unit? Number one is a specifically mentioned asset. Second is the goodwill. Third, all other assets which fall in the scope of IS 36. We'll be discussing, we'll, we'll solve a disposal group question, don't worry at all, in the coming class, inshallah. Again, again can be recognized for any subsequent increase in the favorable as cost to sell, but not in X, that is extremely important. This two and a half line, it has been examined once in the past paper, I mean more than once in fact. It was tested in consolidation also. Look at this maximum reversal under IFRS 5. Maximum reversal of impairment loss under IFRS 5. It is equal to Impairment loss
अंडर आई एस थर्टी सिक्स प्लस इंपेयरमेंट लॉस अंडर आई एफ एस फाइव रिपीट द मैक्सिमम रिवर्सल ऑफ इंपेयरमेंट लॉस अंडर आई एफ एस फाइव इज एक्चुअली इक्वल टू द इंपेयरमेंट लॉस विच यू हैव प्रीवियसली रिकॉग्नाइज अंडर आई एस थर्टी सिक्स एंड द इंपेयरमेंट लॉस अंडर आई एफ एस फाइव लुक एट दिस Again, can be recognized for any subsequent increase in the fair value less cost to sell, but not in excess of cumulative impairment loss that has already been recognized either when the asset were written off to the fair value less to cost uh, less cost to sell or previously under I S thirty six. So maximum reversal, as I mentioned, is actually equal to the impairment loss under I S thirty six plus the impairment loss under I F S five. You cannot exceed. uh this amount an asset held for sale is not depreciated even if it is being used by the entity obviously even you are using it but still you cannot depreciate because the non current asset you have classified as current asset so it's a very important concept even you are using the asset still you cannot depreciate after you have applied i for s5 Let's see what they are asking. On first January X one, AB acquires a building for two hundred thousand, with an expected life is fifty years. On thirty first number X four, after the four years, AB puts the building up for immediate sale. Costs to sell the building are estimated at ten thousand. Okay. Outline the accounting treatment of the above building had a fair value on December X four, two lakh twenty, and one ten. Okay. See before applying IFRS five, first you have to calculate the up dated carrying amount. This building was purchased for two hundred thousand. On one one X one, so it means. On December X four, we are applying IFRS five. So what do you have to do? Take this two hundred thousand. Can I say four years accumulated depreciation? We need to deduct. Let me use the calculator. Two hundred thousand divided by fifty. I'm getting four thousand multiplied by four. Sixteen thousand. It means, according to us, the updated carrying amount is one eighty four. On January X one, AB acquires a building for two hundred thousand with an expected life is fifty years. December X four, AB puts the building up to immediate sale. Cost to sell is this, this, this. It means this is the updated carrying amount. We have to compare this updated carrying amount with fair value minus cost to sell. In part A, the fair value is two lakh twenty thousand. Cost to sell is ten thousand. It means. Fair value minus cost to sell. This is two twenty minus ten. Fair value less cost to sell is two ten. Updated carrying amount is one eighty four. So can I say asset will be at one eighty four? Because IFRS five says under IFRS five asset will be measured at lower of updated carrying amount and fair fair value less cost to sell. So in this part A, updated carrying amount is lower than fair value minus cost to sell. So we will keep this building at one eighty four. Look at this part B. Obviously, carrying amount is one eighty four, but the fair value now examiner says it is one lakh ten thousand. From this one ten, if I deduct ten thousand, it means fair value minus cost to sell in part B is one lakh. 
So you have to bring down your asset from 184 to 1 lakh. Because under IFRS 5, asset will be measured at lower of updated carry amount, which is 184, and fair value minus cost to sell, which is 1 lakh. So this time, fair value minus cost to sell is lower, which is 100,000. So from this fair value minus cost to sell, which is 1 lakh. So can I say when you will be bringing your asset from 184 to 1 lakh, so 84,000 is simply your impairment loss, which will be charged to PNL in part B. 84,000 is your impairment loss, which will be charged to PNL. I think we did the same thing. You can see this. Updated carrying amount is 184. This means building will be continued to be measured at 184. Look at this part B. The building will therefore be measured at 1 lakh. An impairment loss of 84,000 will be charged to the statement of pain. Let's see this example quickly. What are they saying? Discuss the accounting treatment of the above. Nash purchase building for its own use on January X1 for 1 million. Attributed it a 50 year useful life. Nash uses the revaluation model, that is good, to account for the building. On December X2, this building was revalued to 1.2 million. Now listen. Let's say, I'm just ignoring 3.0 for the sake of simplicity. This building was bought for 1,000. From 1st January X1 till December X2, Obviously, two years have been passed. If I deduct the accumulated depreciation to calculate the carrying amount before revaluation, 1000 divided by 50 into 2. So, I think I'll get 40 if I'm not wrong. Yes, 40. So logically, before revaluation, the carrying amount of the asset is 960. Now examiner says December X2, the revalued amount is 1200. I'm ignoring 30. It means December X2, we have to recognize a revaluation surplus. Twelve hundred minus nine sixty. There's a revaluation surplus of two forty. Okay. It means now your asset value has become twelve hundred. And after revaluation, we always depreciate the asset by using remaining life. So initially this building had a life of 50 years, but now the remaining life is just 48 years because two years have passed. Okay. Exactly after one year of the revaluation, December X3, the building met the criteria to be classified held for sale. It's fair value deemed to be 1.1 million cost to the cost necessary to sell the building are estimated 50,000. Nash does not make a reserve transfer in respect of excess depreciation. Uh, normally what happens after revaluation when you depreciate the asset organizations, they can follow if they want to realize the revaluation surplus and transfer that revaluation to the retain earning. But over here, Nash is not following this policy. So, they are not realizing the revaluation surplus. Realizing the revaluation surplus means you're just transferring the revaluation surplus slowly and gradually to the retained earning. But Nash does not have a such policy. Okay. 
Now listen, you cannot directly uh, apply IFRS 5. Before applying IFRS 5 on December 31st, December X3, first we have to calculate updated carrying amount. Another very important point is, this time company is just not following IA 16. Actually, company is following right now. Company, this company follows IA 16 revaluation model. Okay. Let me show here. Simply depreciate this 1200 over 48 years. One year has been passed after the revaluation. So there's a depreciation of 25. Carrying amount is 1175. And let me repeat, company does not follow cost model, company follows revaluation model. So before applying IFRS 5, you have to compare this carrying amount 1175 with the fair value. What is the fair value which they have given us? On December X3, they have given us a fair value 1.1 million means 1100. Let me repeat, before applying IFRS 5, we have to compare the carrying amount with the fair value because we are following the, re this company follows revaluation model. Now, fair value is 1100 and the carrying amount is 1175. So instead of increase, there's a decrease of 75. 1175 minus your fair value is 1100. So actually value is not increasing. There's a decrease of 75. Now the question is how should I recognize the decrease of 75? Listen, so far you have not applied IFRS 5. Before applying IFRS 5, we are required to compare carrying amount with the fair value. As soon as we compare the carrying amount with the fair value, so there's a loss of 75. Since we have not applied IFRS 5 yet, this 75 will be charged to the revaluation surplus, will be charged to OCI because the carrying amount of building is already having a revaluation surplus. And the building is carrying amount is having a revaluation surplus of 240. So this 75 will be taken as revaluation loss because already there's a revaluation surplus within the books. So how we are going to recognize this 75? Very simple. We are going to debit the revaluation surplus number. Means OCA by 75. Let's say building will be created by 75. Okay, by making this entry, now the updated carrying amount is 1100. Even though you have calculated the updated carrying amount 1100, you are not supposed to stop at 1100. Because under IFRS 5, you have to keep the carrying amount at lower of updated carrying amount and fair value, fair value minus cost to sell. Now, if I calculate fair value minus cost to sell, Fair value of this asset is 1100. Let's see. Do we have any cost to sell? Yes. Cost to sell is 50. Cost to sell is 50. One zero five zero. So your fair value minus cost to sell is one zero five zero. Now listen. Logically, your fair value minus cost to sell is one zero five zero. And updated carrying amount, updated carrying amount from 1175, if we deduct the 75, updated carrying amount is 1100. Repeat, updated carrying amount is 1100, fair value minus cost to sell is 1050. So I have to bring down my asset from 1100 to 1050. But when we are, when you bring down your asset from 1100 to 1050, because of IFRS 5, whatever loss you need to recognize, it will be charged to PNL. So under IFRS 5, asset is measured at, asset is 
measure it. Lower of carry amount which we have calculated 1100. Fair value minus cost to sell. So the loss of 50 is charged to PNL. The loss of 50 is charged to PNL. This 50 will be treated as an impairment loss and it will be charged to PNL. As I already mentioned under IFRS 5, whenever recognize, whenever you are supposed to charge the impairment loss, you will always recognize the impairment loss to the PNL. Let's see. Okay, we have this. Mm, I think we calculated this 960 if I'm not wrong. Revaluation is 240. Then we reached on 1175. Okay. Look at this. At December X3, the building is held for sale because it is held under a revaluation model. It must be initially revalued downward to its fair value 1100. The loss of 75 is recorded and other comprehensive income because there are previously revaluation gains related, relating to this asset within the equity. The building then be revalued fair value less cost to sell. Therefore, the asset must be reduced in value by a further 50,000. This loss is charged to a statement of profit and loss. Another thing is a little idea presentation in the statement of financial position. Obviously, we have already discussed non current asset will be reclassified to as current asset. Similarly, if you have a disposal group, then obviously all the asset and liabilities of the disposal, all the assets of the disposal group, they will be capped under current assets. All the liabilities of the disposal group will be classified as current liabilities. IFRS 5 states that asset classified as held for sale should be presented separately from other asset in the statement of financial position. The liabilities of a disposal group classified as held for sale should be presented separately from other liabilities in the statement of financial position. The major classes of asset and liabilities classified as held for sale must separately disclose either on the face of statement of financial position or on the notes. Where an asset or disposal group is classified as held for sale after the reporting date, then knowledge is staying it. But before issue in the financial statement, details should be disclosed in the notes and it is a non-adjusting it. Okay. Let me just ask one thing. They have just given you the idea. Asset, non-current asset, look at the presentation. Non-current asset held for sale under the current asset. Uh, changes to plan of sale. Obviously, we have discussed that it is unlikely that company is going to change the plan. But if what if there's a change? Normally, this is not the case, but what if the change comes? Let's say one year has been passed and still the asset is not sold. And let's say there's no exception to keep the asset. Let's say there's no exception. So it means 12 months have passed. You are not able to sell the asset and there's no exception because if in case of exception, even the time takes more than 12 months, still you will follow IFRS 5. Let's say there's no exception at all. 12 months have passed company is unable to sell the asset. So it means now you have to bring back the asset from IFRS 5 to the normal standard. Then what should be done? If a sale does not take place within one year, IFRS 5 says that asset or disposal group can be still be classified held for sale if the delay has been caused by events or circumstances beyond the entity's control. The delay has been caused by events or circumstances beyond the entity's control. For example, 
you really wanted to sell a property plan and equipment and assuming your property plan and equipment is so precious so significant uh, that before selling that asset you ha have to take the permission from the government let's say if this is the case you have to take the permission from the government only then you will be able to sell the asset in that case even it takes more than 12 months still you can apply ifrs5 there is sufficient evidence that entity is still committed to the sale and your company is still committed to sell the asset. Still, you are carrying out all the actions which are necessary to require. If the criteria for held for sale are no longer met, then the entity must ceases to classify the asset or disposal group as held for sale. The asset or disposal group must be measured at lower off. It's carrying amount before it was classified as held for sale. Adjusted for any depreciation, amortization, revaluation that would have been recognized had it not been classified as held for sale. Simply, first you have to calculate the carrying amount without applying IFRS 5. So, if you are leaving IFRS 5, bringing your asset to the nor taking your asset from IFRS 5 to the normal applicable IAS. IFRS 5 says the asset or disposal group must be measured at lower off. Number one is the calculate the carrying amount. Let's say as you have never applied IFRS 5. Second is the recoverable amount at the date of subsequent decision not to sell. And we know that recoverable amount itself is a higher off. Fair value minus cost to sell and value news. The recoverable amount itself is higher off. And if I give you the idea, let's say under IFRS 5, I'm assuming the asset is having a value of 1000. Let's say if you have never used IFRS 5, the value would have been assuming 950. And let's say a recoverable amount, I'm assuming the recoverable amount is 970. According to IFRS 5, you have to bring your asset to the lower of carrying amount if they were you have never used ifrs 5 which is 950 in my example and the recoverable amount which is 970 so you have to bring your asset from 1000 to 950 so this 50 is your impairment loss because from 1000 you are bringing your asset to 950 so 50 is your impairment loss which will be charged to pnl any adjustment is required in the profit and loss as a gain or loss from continuing operations. So don't worry at all. We will discuss the discontinued operation as well in the next class, inshallah. Disclosure in the period in which a non condenser disposal group has been classified as held for sale or sold. IFRS 5 says the entity must disclose a description of the non condenser disposal group, description of the fact and circumstances of the sale or expected sale, you have to just give us all this information. Look at this example. I really want every one of you. Can you quickly solve this example? Part A and then part B. Just at least deal with part A. Then we are going to discuss the part B as well. I'm giving you uh, five minutes to do that. Try to attempt this question. Okay, any answer? In part A, they are saying the asset is held under the cost model. I-16, explain the accounting treatment of the asset initial classification as held for sale and the year end December X2, assuming asset is held under the cost model. And the second is the asset has the same net book value as the asset in part A on July X2, but it has previously been held under the revaluation model IA16 and cumulative previous revaluation is 2000, none of which is treated as a realize at first July X2. Let's see. On July X2, an item of property plan and equipment is classified as held for sale was Expected to be sold in March X3. Okay. Classified as held for sale on July X2. Expected to be sold in March X3 within 12 months. The item cost 400,000 on January X0. 
and is being depreciated over eight years to a zero residual value. It's fair value less cost to sell. And the market value in July X2 is 280 and 282 respectively. The asset had not been sold by the year end December X2. The asset fair value, fair value less cost to sell on December is 270. Okay. So the first thing is, can I say before applying IFRS 5? Before applying IFRS 5, we have to first calculate the updated carrying amount of the asset. Yes or no? So, criteria is met on which date? On July X2, the item of property plan and equipment is classified as held for sale. So, can I say until 1st July X2? This property plan and equipment, can I say we will be using IA 16 accounting, obviously? So until 1st July X2, property, plant and equipment simply is a non-current asset. And can I say it's accounting according, according to IA 16, we have to follow the simple accounting. So property, plant and equipment is a non-current asset and Accounting treatment according to IS sixteen. So until July X2, property plan and equipment is a non-current asset and its accounting treatment according to IA 16 will be followed. So what do we have to do? Can I say we have to first calculate the updated carrying amount? It means from the date of acquisition, from the date of purchase till 1st July X2, we have to depreciate the asset. Let me first give you the annual depreciation. What will be the annual depreciation? This was purchased for 400,000. Let me use the calculator. 400,000 divided by eight. Annual depreciation is 50,000. So simply carrying amount prior to carrying amount carrying amount prior to IFRS five. Please try to understand. We bought this asset for 400,000. Annual depreciation is 50. This asset was purchased on 11X2, X0. From 11X0 till 1st July X2. Can I say there's a time period of 2.5 years? X0, X1, and six months of X2. So it means. 400,000 minus 50 multiplied by 
कैरिंग ऑन आई एम गेरिंग टू लैख सेवेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड सो कैरिंग ऑन प्राइड टू आई फॉर एस फाइव एस टू लैख सेवेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड ऑन फर्स्ट जुलाई एक्स टू Now, according to IFRS five, what do we have to do? Can I say number one? We are going to reclassify this non-current asset to current asset, and we have to measure this asset. Can I say at lower of carrying amount and fair value minus cost to sell? Property plan and equipment. Under IFRS five is classified can I say as non current asset held for sale and in SOFP it will be written in current assets. Property plan and equipment under IFRS five is classified as non-current asset held for sale, and in SOFP it will be written under current assets, and obviously separately from other assets. And it is measured at lower of. Carrying amount, which we have calculated two lakh, and fair value minus fair value less cost to sell. Let's see what is the fair value less cost to sell. Mm -hmm. On Jul, uh, on thirty, on first July X two. Fair value, fair value less cost to sell is two eighty. Fair value minus cost to sell is two eighty. Can I say if the fair value minus cost to sell is two eighty, and the carrying amount is two seventy five? So can I say this property plan and equipment will continue be to be measured at two seventy five? This means that the property plan and equipment will continue to be measured at two seventy five. But look at this. What is happening on December? And right now we are dealing in part A. Okay. On thirty first December X thirty first December the value is two seventy. Now the fair value minus cost to sell has dropped to two seventy. So it means on thirty first December X two. Impairment loss five thousand. That is two seventy five minus two seventy. Charge to PNL. Charge to profit or loss. This is part A. The question is same. Everything is same. The examiner is asking again to apply IFRS five, but this time company is not using IS, not following IS sixteen cost model. Company follows, let's say, IS sixteen revaluation model. Part B: The asset has the same net book value which we have calculated, which is two seventy five. Part A, July X two, but 
it has previously been held under the revaluation model and there is always already a revaluation surplus of 2000 and they don't have a policy of realizing the revaluation means transferring the revaluation from revaluation to retained earning there's no such thing now what do you have to do since in part b they are following ia 16 revaluation model so prior to ifrs 5 you have to compare the carrying amount of 275 with the fair value and a student's fair value is 282. Fair value is 282. So in part B. Carrying amount. 275. Is compared with. Fair value. So there's a revaluation surplus of 7,000. Which means revaluation surplus can I say 7,000. 282 Minus 275. Property plan and equipment debit by 7,000. Revaluation, which is recognized in other comprehensive incomes. Okay. This is now prior to revaluation. Now you will say that your carrying amount is actually 282. Okay. Now, after applying IFRS 5, we have to measure the asset at lower of carrying amount and fair value minus cost to sell. It means after all this, whatever we have done, on 1st July, X2, the property plan and equipment, can I say is reclassified as non-current asset held for sale, is reclassified as non-current asset held for sale. Can I say it is measured at lower of carrying amount? Students now carrying amount is 282. And fair value minus cost to sell, which is 280. So simply, we need to recognize the impairment loss of 2000. So number one, now this property plan and equipment will not be measured at 282. Can I say it will be measured at 280? The property plan and equipment will therefore be measured at two eighty on first July X two. Simply impairment loss two thousand needs to be recognized. An impairment loss Can I say 2000? That is 282. Will be charged to the PNL. Profit or loss. 
This is what happens on July X2. But we also have been given the information of December. 31st December X2, the value is 270. So there's a further impairment loss. It means on 31st December X2, further impairment loss of, can I say 10,000? 280 minus will be charged to the profit and loss. will be charged to the profit or loss. So I strongly believe uh, that number of concepts relating to IFRS 5 should be clear and crystal clear. Uh, one area is still left, that is accounting of discontinued operation, which we'll be discussing in a coming class, inshallah. Plus, uh, inshallah, from the coming week, in my live revision classes, we will also start discussion of the past papers. So we will also start with the revision, past paper questions as well, inshallah. And just for the reset batch, I just want to give you a few information regarding what exactly we offer in uh, SBR. I would say the entire SBR in 90 lectures. On average, one lecture is just 45 minutes long. You will be getting then practice videos, obviously. Number of practice videos and again, the time period on the practice video, you will find more or less 45 minutes on average. Third, 10 tests, which we are going to start from the coming Monday, inshallah. But what is the procedure of the test? Listen, admin is going to share the test with you. We are not going to check your test. You will check the test by yourself. We will give you a video lecture on that test. Still, you have any confusion, you can ask the question in the relevant WhatsApp group or you, if you want, you can ask in the relevant. Uh, you can ask in the live revision class. Right now, I was conducting weekly one live revision class, but now we are planning to go at least two live revision classes in a week. Fourth, you will be getting a smart revision as well. In a smart revision, all the important IES and IFRSs I'm going to cover it within nine hours, inshallah. Mock. If you attempt the mock within three hours and 10 minutes and submit to us, then you will get a proper feedback from me on your mock. You will be getting a proper video lecture on the mock plus a proper feedback means a proper feedback. One more thing which we have introduced from this session onwards, that is grant live revision class. And obviously, weekly live revision classes. And if I just give you the ASA admin number, those students, they are outside the Pakistan, the ASA admin number is 0092. Triple three three triple six two one four student within Pakistan. And to be very honest, if you go through all these uh, steps, which I've just mentioned, all these seven products, which we offer, you can very easily pass the paper very easily. Easy means very, but you have to go through all these seven products. If you go through all these seven products, uh, you will have no issue at all.
because those students they have seen the lectures they will obviously can exactly comment because in my classes you will not only see ISS and IFSS I have an equal focus on conceptual framework second investor perspectives because most of the time in the current issue nowadays examiner is asking the question only in one direction that is the ex investor perspective what exactly investor is looking in your financial statement so you have to be really good in investor perspective you have to be really good in traditional ratio analysis and in alternative performance measures plus ethics because if you're just focusing on consolidation that is 30 marks a plus you are just focusing on ISS and IFRSS so you know just focusing on these three areas it becomes difficult to pass SBR so you have to follow a balanced approach obviously you have to have a really good focus on consolidation ISS IFRSS plus you have to be really good in conceptual framework you have to be really good in traditional as well as especially in alternative performance measures plus when it comes to the current issue now i would say the biggest current issue is what exactly investor wants to see in your financial statement so if you and plus ethics in sbr you should be expecting at least five to seven marks on ethics and getting five to seven marks on ethics is very very easy very easy and while watching the lectures if you find any question any query you can always ask in the whatsapp group uh, i'm going to personally reply your queries so that is each that is all from my side abil ahmed from abil school of accountancy uh, for my reset batch of sbr june 2024 if any one of you have any question you can ask before i just end the session and i am really thankful to you people that you people have taken out time to attend the class. Is there any question? Or there's no question? Students, Just waiting, 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 waiting. And let me tell you one more thing. At my college at ASA Abilu School of Accountancy, you will get, inshallah, all the renowned teachers. Like I would say Kashif Kamran is with us. We have Kashif Kamran is with us for AA, AAA and SBL. So Kashif Kamran is teaching at my college, AA, AAA, SBL, plus Sir Saad Al Taf is teaching SBL. Hassan Ul Haki is teaching law, great teacher of law, I would say. And you will get number of other teachers for the basic papers. And myself, I'm teaching skill levels as well as professional levels. In skill levels, I'm teaching PM, TX, FR, FM, SBR, ATX, AFM. Alhamdulillah. Seven point seven point. There's weekly live revision class. Weekly live revision class. In fact, now there are going to be weekly live revision classes instead of one class. So students, I would say thank you very much and have a nice life. If you have any questions, even after the orientation session, you can always ask the question. And if you really want to connect with me, you can ask my admin. They will connect you directly with me. So thank you very much. Have a nice life.